Your photo is open in Photoshop and you're ready to start editing now. If you go to the side panel under layers, you'll see your photo. It's on a locked layer called background. All you want to do is tap the padlock one click to unlock the layer. And now we can start editing that layer. You're going to go to just below the bottom of the layers panel and there's a symbol of a square and it's got a dark circle in the center of it. You're going to click on that square with the circle in the middle of it. A white box will come up next to your photo and that's your layer mask. Next you're going to click on the circle. Half of it's filled in, half of it's not. You're going to click that and all of your options will appear. Go to the top of the options and click solid color. You're going to want to pick a color that's nice and bright because this is where you remove the background so you want to see the color showing through. With your mouse, grab the color layer and simply drag it below your photo. So now if you erase the picture that you have open, you're going to see the red layer behind it. So this is where we're going to remove the background and this is called a mask. So we're not going to be erasing the photo itself, but we will be removing the background. So go to the left side where you have your eraser tool. Click that and you'll see there are options at the top. It'll say mode, brush, opacity. Mine says 39%. So you're going to want to change those things. You're going to want to make the size smaller and, and you're going to want to make it a little, give it a harder edge as well. This is at 39% opacity, so I want the background completely gone. Let's make that 100% opacity. So now you can start erasing the background and you'll see your red layer underneath showing through. I recommend zooming in as close as you can um, while you are depetching your image so that you can get as close to your subject as possible. You can make the size of your eraser smaller. You can make the edge of your eraser harder. You don't want it to be a super hard edge or you're gonna see an, a naturally, um, you know, very sharp line dividing the subject of your photo with the background. You want it to sort of have a little bit of a softer um, edge to it as you can see. While you're depetching around long straight edges, you can use the shift keyboard option. So what you do, do one dot of eraser, move to the next spot, hold shift down while you tap your eraser again, and it'll erase the entire line, the directional line that you've gone. So shift, click, shift, click. You can just drag it if you're not comfortable with that. You can get in real close and just drag your eraser to erase all the background. Oh, if you make a mistake, and you cut into the subject of your photo, you're going to want to go down to the left corner where you see the two colored boxes it should be black and white and the two little arrows, you're gonna click the arrows. This is going to swap your eraser. So now you're going to be adding the background in. And, and this is why we don't want to erase the actual background of the photo because if you make a mistake like that, you, you can't put it back in. This is simply masking the background out of it. It's not actually gone. So now you've depetched the entire subject of your photo um, and you want to just get rid of the rest of the background. So you can either use your rectangular shape tool to actually delete pieces of the background or make your eraser larger and just erase it all.
So now you've removed the entire background of your photo. To change the size of the subject of the photo, make sure your layer is highlighted and go up to edit and scroll down to free transform. So now you can drag the subject of your photo to a different size. So now you can see my photo is smaller than the width of the canvas. And if you zoom in very closely, you'll see you can actually see the edge of the photo. It's a very thin line, but depending on what color or image you use for your background, you may actually see that line. So now I go back to the layer mask and I like to delete that line just to make sure nothing shows. Using your free transform, you can rotate your photo and you can change the background if you just want it a plain color, such as white. Um, and next we'll be adding in a photo to the background. You're gonna go up to the top of Photoshop, File, scroll down to Place Linked. and select the image that you downloaded for the background. I always download a number of images and just see which one I think works best. Sometimes I think I've found the perfect image and when I plug it in, it's just not really what I was planning and so then I'll try something else. And use your free transform button under edit, free transform to just change the size of your background and reposition it Here I right click and flip it, the, flip the photo horizontally. I just think it looks a little, I don't know, the lighting looks a little better that way. So next, if someone had actually taken this photo, the background wouldn't be quite so in focus. So we're going to blur it a bit. So select the photo on your layers panel, your background layer, and we're gonna go up to the top to filter, scroll down to blur, and then we're gonna select Gaussian Blur. A little dialog box will come up, and here you can select how blurred you want it to be. Great, so there's one updated background, although I'm just not sure I'm loving it, so I'm gonna try some of the other images I downloaded. So again, we're gonna go up to File, scroll down to Place Linked, and we're gonna import another background image. I think I like the brick a little more. I'm gonna blur it. I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just gonna blur it just enough. And I really, yeah, I, I do like how the red of the brick, you know, the, the contrast between the blue jeans and the red of the brick works really well. But just for fun, let's try one more. I also downloaded this image, the stack of jeans. Maybe I'm standing in my closet, holding my cookies up against my jeans. I'm going to resize it. And again, I'm going to blur the background. There we go, updated background.